Hello, Brian McCarthy here from Bolt and Break. We are making a really cool tutorial today. We're making this alien warpy like substance, kind of looks like something from Stranger Things. Great thing is there are no plugins needed for this. It's all native to After Effects. So now you can gloat to your friends, designer friends, whoever you want, that you made this without any plugins because the most important thing about being a designer is yes, gloating. A joke, of course, let's get started. Um, so we want to create a new composition, uh, control N, call this blend comp. Uh, these settings are fine. Again, it's kind of dependent on the length that you want. We're going to, you know, keep everything neat, put our blend comp into main. And because this will be a pre-comp, -pre catch that, put it into our pre-comp file. So we're now in our blend comp. Let's close these two. Create a new solid, call it base. Formation. Make sure uh, your solid's black. So the first effect we want to apply is noise. Look at that, it's already there. Now, I took a bit of playing around to get to this point that I wanted with the effect, but it all kind of relies on the base layer with the fractal noise and using kind of harsh edges to drive that animation. The settings I used was dynamic progressive spline, but my contrast to about 165 and bring your complexity right up to about 14. The next effect, we'll go back to fractal noise in a minute, is emboss. Drop that on there. This is this is really cool because you can you can start to see what's forming and where this comes from. We're going to put up relief to 0.8 and our contrast to 200. So you can see these, if I zoom in here, you can see these bumps starting to emerge, kind of like, you know, a depth map or a bump map in 3D. The next effect we want to add is find edges. And you really start to see what's going on. It's a bit too harsh, so we want to add some blend to it. So just kind of like maybe put 5% blend on it and invert it. You kind of can see the base effect starting to emerge with the base system. How I drove this is I set my evolution. I gave it a keyframe, went all the way to the end. And I did one rotation and you can start to see this warp and break. Maybe let's add more to it. Let's add five, see what that looks like. Yeah, you start to get more warpiness there. Um, and they were three very simple effects used with each other to kind of start to make this come to life. Just to kind of add some more variance to the movement, uh, I scaled this up to about 200. So I moved this up to the top, let's go zero, and I started to move this down very slowly, don't have to move it the whole way, and you can, it just adds a little bit more layer, a bit more movement, and you wouldn't usually do something like this, but it's kind of a sickly movement anyway, so you kind of have to make it feel nauseous because it's liquid and it, there's kind of a bit of inertia to it and it's kind of caving in on itself and it's it's meant to be kind of you know gooey in, in the movement and you kind of start to see that effect let's add some more movement to it Put all the way down and you really start to see it come to life now we need to add kind of atmosphere to this uh, control y for new solid call it particles. There's a lot you can do with the particle systems in After Effects. I'd encourage you to you know, maybe have a play. I wouldn't use just the particle systems on its own in After Effects. I'd apply effects on top of it like turbulence to space. You'll start to see what I mean in a minute. Um, so we have our particle system here. You know, it looks garbage. So what we want to do is we want to start playing with these settings and we want to understand what we're doing because that's important too. Um, first things first, let's change the colors because they're mank. Um, we're going to go maybe a dark bluish. Let's go with gray, uh, bluey gray. So the producer of the particles 
it basically is so it's where the particles are emitting from and what this does is this is imagine there's a box in here and you can give the particles a lot of room within that box you're giving it like this kind of like space a container if you will so we want to bring that up let's do 120 150 these are just guessing it can be you know it can be a one by one it, it doesn't have to be that let's take the birth rate to two and longevity to three with enough finesse you can start to kind of you know guide it so let's set the animation type to direction bring the velocity to 3.3 Increase the velocity, you say, you're mad. Bring your resistance to one. And that kind of does what it says. It adds more fight to these particles moving around. And the particle type will use a faded sphere. And you can see these particles are just, they're bouncing. They don't look real. They're kind of all over the place. So let's increase the size variance to 100. And bring this to isosceles kind of get to start to see more interesting stuff uh, birth size to 0.2 and death size 2.2 that will bring down the size of the particles let's increase our max capacity to 100 and that means we can kill off some of them sooner so they're, they're quite bouncy in all over the place let's have a play with some other settings bring our gravity to zero what that has done pulls the particles back down from the producer so if we put that to 10 our particles are going to kind of like they're going to fly all over the place they're going to come down quite fast you know if we put that to zero there's no gravity in the scene so they just kind of emit upwards because there's nothing to pull them back down it's it kind of does what it says it doesn't look great here, but as we start to treat this and stylize this a little bit more, you start to see it looking uh, kind of more natural and kind of more like nature or, you know, like particles would work in the atmosphere. So we're going to add a little bit of noise just for style, not see noise, just noise. So I'm dragging noise onto there. It's up to you kind of how we play with this. You could go 100. I think what this does is it just, oh, of course, untick color because we don't want that as a bit of like dust and variance to the particles it's not needed if you don't want it or if it's adding time to your render i never did this with uh, particle systems before but i used a tile effect um i used cc tiler and i brought i kind of half this start to see the particles uh operate smaller and the, the nice thing about using something like cc tiler for this effect so you've built out this system i could just go in and you know create more particles and play with this but if i have a system i'm liking and i just want to scale it up and down and add variance to it also using something like cc tyler will reduce your render time if you want to add more particles to the scene and your system can't handle it it's a kind of a quick way of adding more stuff because it just tiles the effect now the next thing we want to do pre-compose these and to pre-compose this hold shift and shift control c uh, call this your ace comp now we have our base layer driving this animation what we want to do is we want to start stylizing it and seeing what information we can pull from this how i go about that is i'd use an effect called lemetri color this is quite a heavy effect i wouldn't recommend this if your system's chugging you know just use levels for what i'm about to do and maybe contrast there's lots of ways to this but what i tend to do here is it just gives you more control over the kind of finer edges within the color and style of the overall look and feel we're going to bring up the contrast let's bring it up to about 30. let's bring the shadows down so so we're trying to darken it these white edges that are being pulled from the edge there's there's something we can do here so now that i know i've seen these edges you start to pull out the highlights what it's doing is it's pulling all these kind of white edges and you can change that color you can glow that color you can you know pull more information from that color you've kind of got to see your system 
starting to emerge within itself as you build it or as you're playing you start to see something let's leave this for now this is nice you can also blue it up warm it up i quite like this color because you're getting kind of like a, a bluey cinematic feel to it maybe darken the whites just a little bit and the next thing we want to add is cc plastic we really start to pull these edges out CC plastic, it's an effect that trying to mimic shine, shimmer, plastic, the kind of the, the shine and shimmer you get from, from a plastic material. The next effect I added was an extra sharpen, which can be done on Lemetri, but as you go down the trail of these effects, this works as an index. This is the first effect rendered, second effect rendered, third effect rendered. And as you start to add things, they might clog up what you've already done. So you, you want to go back and you want to maybe like rectify that and just add a quick sharpen to it. Um, let's add 10. The next one is glow. And this is where you're going to see those highlights that I was talking about really start to work. And we're going to change color A to a kind of an orangey, yellowy, go orange for B. These colors, maybe a little bit towards the red spectrum. But if we change the original colors to A and B, you start to see they pull through. Maybe let's play with this a little bit. So if we play with this glow threshold, it will start to lock on to those highlights areas and really start to make use of these highlights that we start pulling out. You can increase the intensity. intensity. Maybe make that a little bit more orange and veer that towards a more warm color. Now you're starting to really see this effect come together. So the next effect we want to add is force motion blur. Now this effect is very heavy on the on your computer's hardware. So it will take a while to render through and preview it but it is definitely worth it. So what force motion blur does, I'll explain while this chugs a little bit, takes what it perceives to be very fast movement in a scene and adds blur to it. This is very helpful when we're using that effect like CC Tyler, because it's adding variance to something that can be quite uniform that looks quite repetitive. So you're getting this kind of variance in these tiled particles um, effects. So we kind of halved by 50 and tiled it out and you're getting motion blur on different bits, which is really, really cool. What I would say though is let's have just a quick preview. So you can see this effect is really starting to come together now. You're adding atmosphere. So now that we have motion blur applied, we have a good amount of variance in our scene. It's important to keep note of the stack order in your effects panel. The reason being is you can lose some quality or some realism or some sharpness or if a certain effect is not rendered first, you might lose kind of the power that that effect has to offer. So let's move our CC force motion blur up the stack. Now let's move it there because it makes sense that it's first effects rendered as there's a lot of movement in the scene anyway. We want to keep our sharpen below CC plastic. So now that we have our stack ordered in a place where the effects are working uh, within our favor or how we want them to work, we can add this camera lens blur. This will give us that kind of cinematic look that this kind of defocus and focus coming into the scene. And if you pump this up, just be aware this is a heavy effect. Uh, you can kind of get something similar with ga uh, Gaussian blur, but you get these really nice focus, these kind of fireflies here in the scene. So let's keyframe that at 25 and let's go up to, we have a second and bring that all the way down, down to 10 and like maybe just come up a little bit more. Like it's just trying to focus in and come down and you get that really nice kind of like the scene is merging, it kind of leads you in. And just collapse that stack, go back into your effects and let's add some noise. And this is just kind of a style choice. Sometimes noise can work quite nicely and you can use color. I quite like the color in this, especially at the start, you get that kind of grainy look. It just adds a little bit of a realism to the world or believability to the world that you're trying to create. And if we go back to Lemetri color here, there's a lot of power that Lemetri has. You can really start to play with um, 
how you want your scene to look. Uh, what kind of color you want to apply. And even these lots, I, I, I'm not a big fan of lots myself. But you can just play around and they kind of, they can give you a, the starting point of how the scene's informed. That's way too much. Um, that's all from me. Thank you for watching and taking part in the tutorial. If you have any feedback or questions or requests, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you and goodbye.